Hello and welcome back. Before we start, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. It really does make a difference. Today, we're going to have a look at a 20 inch CRT TV donated to me by a kind lady. She says it has packed it in, but you know me, I hate to waste these electrical retro goodies and I want a CRT for myself. So let's try and repair it. Ah, here it is, this 20 inch Samsung Hydrum Black, a jewel from the late 80s. And personally, I think you can't be a CRT when it comes down to retro gaming. And here's the exact model I'll be looking at. Let's press the switch and see what happens. Well, it seems to be powering up at least. <laughs> No signs of life whatsoever. Oh, that telly just flat line. Well, I'm no expert in CRT restoration or repairs, but I do have a basic knowledge of how they work. These old TVs output the picture from a tube that shoots the rays of coloured light out in a beam. Now, this uh, tube is like a gun, so it shoots the beam containing all the information in only one spot. So for the picture to be formed, the TV spreads that concentrated beam across the screen. To do that, it uses some magnets that are piloted by some microchips. There's one that spreads the beam horizontally, and there's another one that spreads it vertically. If one of these dies, you end up with all the dots concentrated in a row or a column, I imagine. And that's exactly what's going on here, I think. Naturally, there's a load of things that can go wrong in a CRT TV, but I am going to test my luck and just try changing that one chip and see if it works. Let's see if we are lucky or not. Time to open it up. The chassis is held together by four screws and some plastic clips. So it only takes a couple of minutes to open it up. While I speed through the screws, I'd like to say that this is a European TV, so it has an RGB card. Inside it looks surprisingly clean and very tidy, which is quite unusual for old CRT TVs. Now this is the first TV I work on, so I thought I had to remove the anode, uh, which is a thing that looks like a, a suction cup, from it in order to be able to put my hands inside. Um, so my cautionary instincts kicked in um, and had me use something that in hindsight Really ridiculous. I use um, a boot around the screwdriver. Thinking it would be safer, I put the television on the field. And as you can see, the boot method isn't really working. Uh, it kind of gets in the way most of the time. So I decided to be brave and try it without the boot. But it proved to be quite hard to pry it out anyways. And because the tube was getting all scratched, I ultimately decided not to remove it at all. I cleaned some dust with a brush. And then I cleaned the back with some IPA in the areas where it was dirtier. Surprisingly, even the back didn't need much elbow grease. Here's a chip that's responsible for stretching the image vertically. In fact, it's called vertical deflector, as you can see here. This is the one that we're going to remove and replace with a new one. Now the service manual names the chip vertical output, which is fine, and gives us a part number. It's a TDA8356, which looks a bit like this. Now I found one on eBay that was really cheap, so it wasn't a problem, but some components can be really expensive. So I'm going to start removing the chip and in order to do so I have to unscrew it from its uh, heatsink and then desolder the IC from the motherboard. This is fairly quick and easy as there are only 9 pins to desolder. Removing the IC reveals that we'll also need some thermal paste. In this case I'm going to use Arctic Silver 5. Here's the desoldered chip and here's a new one that paradoxically looks older. After fitting the IC with some thermal paste, it's time to solder it in. This is also a fairly quick process, but I'll skip ahead to reveal my glamorous soldering skills that have improved very little. 
Anyways, with the new deflector in, let's see if we've got a picture. And bingo! We did it! Now, let's see how it copes with a signal. And as you can barely see, it works. That's great! Now let's close it up. Closing is again pretty easy, just be mindful of the tube's neck and don't smash it with the rear cover. And one last switch on, just to make sure it's still working. And yes, all is good, we have ourselves a new CRT. Well, oh, you know what I mean. Sonic has never looked better, look at those scan lines, amazing. Well, what a stroke of luck, it worked first attempt. I can't get any luckier than that, it's a bit like winning at the lottery. Anyways, it's repaired now and ready for a retro gaming session. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. A subscription is really appreciated because it allows me to do more of this stuff that I love. And before I leave you, a big shout out to the Retro Asylum podcast. Thank you guys for keeping me company at the gym. If you haven't listened to it, give it a shot. It's really worth it. I recommend it. Until next time, stay safe.